archers are in one of the strongest positions they've ever been in in rise of kingdoms so today we're gonna go over everything you need to know if you want to go all in on archers we're gonna go over the best civilization we're gonna go over the best order to invest in legendary commanders and finally we're gonna go over the best way to progress your archer equipment here in rise of kingdoms but first what's going on guys cheers quick reminder there's a link in the description I'm doing a giveaway for the month of August it's very simple you just have to go click the link and follow me on all social media that's literally it and with that being said let's Let's jump right into the video now the first thing that I want to talk about is obviously I did this video the other day for infantry and one of the most requested things was to do the same thing for archers and cavalry so that's what we're doing today but I do want to let you guys know that the best thing to do in rise of kingdoms is to chase the meta okay which means you're probably going to have at least one army of every troop type in your late game open field army compositions right it only makes sense there's so many ultra powerful commanders in the game that if you're only focusing on one troop type exclusively you're leaving a lot on the table and your account is not going to be as good as it could be but in this video we are focusing on players who want to mainly have a majority of archer marches okay so by that I mean you know in the late game you want to have maybe two or three really strong archer marches and then maybe one of each infantry and cavalry so that's what we're going to do in this video and the first thing we're going to start with is your civilization and right now I am actually playing as the best civilization for archers now this Ottoman Empire civilization is really good for PvP if you are in between kvks and there's a lot of downtime then again i recommend germany i said this in my infantry video but this gives you 10 percent action point recovery which is very important for free to play players and new players as well who really have to grind out barbarians for events to get their hands on you know arrows of resistance to destroy all the forts for the books of the covenant or even just to participate in like holiday events things like that uh, the action point recovery is super super valuable for free to play players but once you are in late game pvp ottoman empire is the go-to for archers okay you have an archer special unit you gain five percent archer health which is really nice five percent march speed is very very good here and five percent skill damage this is like the three best things that you could possibly ask for with archers and a special unit this is i really wish uh cavalry and infantry had a civilization like this it is the best of the best stats so so good i am using two infantry marches in the open field and i still am using ottoman empire because of how good these stats are absolutely love it and we could just keep it simple just play as ottoman that it that's it with the civilization out of the way let's jump over to the tier maker now of course this is how we're going to organize our thoughts so that way we can see exactly the sort of order with which it makes sense to invest in these legendary commanders now the early game for rise of kingdoms is pretty much the same for every troop type and by that i mean the first thing you should invest in is a richard his first skill should probably be at five the rest of his skills you could just unlock them leave them at one save your sculptures okay you really only need 10 sculptures to summon richard and then i think 50 sculptures to get that first skill to five that's going to give you a really nice healing factor and he's going to be pretty tanky for a lot of the pve content the reason that you want this is because he is what's going to help you chain barbarians out in the world with your isong ye or juga leong that's a little spoiler right there uh but i think you all expected both of those commanders in this video and also you can use him for things like sunset canyon lost canyon basically anywhere that you need a tank having a very cheap budget build for richard is probably going to pay off in the long run after that isong ye okay i think as an archer main you probably want to expertise isong ye i think this is a no-brainer especially if you are ultra ultra active as a free to play player if you can expertise him in just a couple of months after starting the game as free to play of course the whales can do it much faster than that but isong a continues to be super valuable in rise of kingdoms because of his vanilla circular aoe massive bonus to skill damage as well for anybody that he's in a pair with it's incredible so i highly recommend that and then unfortunately that's pretty much all that you can do until you reach kvk3 i think the kvk2 commanders like tamiris and like edward of woodstock not worth investing in okay uh, you can get a 5115 tamiris and that does help in niche roles in late game with swarming things down especially swarming in arc of osiris and also swarming in uh, you know flags and kvk but realistically if you're watching this you're probably a free-to-play player you're probably not swarming flags i don't suspect 
that you would be doing that maybe you are maybe you're crazy maybe you're giga chad okay it's probably not the best place to put your sculptures and also getting a 5115 as free to play without any talent resets is really quite difficult so i'm gonna say tamiris probably a pass also definitely pass on edward of woodstock and then that really doesn't leave you with anything until kvk3 uh i mean you have the mose and honestly i think the mose is slept on i think he's actually very very well rounded especially with his relic in the late game but he's a gold key commander and you're going to get sculptures of him for free over time but it's going to be really slow so by the time that he's usable he's you're going to be in season uh three of kvk or beyond anyway so don't spend your sculptures here either just hoard everything after your ysg and save them until kvk3 that's going to be about eight seven to nine months into your kingdom's lifespan that's when you'll hit kvk3 and you can start to invest in some of the even more powerful legendaries once you hit kvk3 Zhuge Liang is probably the number one thing that you want to focus on okay and the reason for this is because I think this is probably the strongest commander in the game right now he is insanely good five targets circular aoe 2000 damage factor and a massive debuff to all five targets for three seconds they deal 15 percent less damage unbelievable first skill unbelievable second skill 30 percent health five percent archer damage and a 50 percent chance to negate control effects and also deal an instant proc damage to the attacking troop with only a five second cooldown so anytime you get silenced by those guan yus there's a 50 percent chance you're actually just gonna shrug it off and deal 500 damage to the guan yu crazy stuff there now for the last two skills now let me actually before i say that uh you probably want to expertise Zhuge Liang. okay so if you hoard all your sculptures until kvk3 there's two routes you can go the first one is just expertise him it makes sense then you would do Zhuge Liang primary with isong ye secondary and that just works okay uh it's a very slow march so please keep that in mind it's very slow but the damage output is absolutely like think of it as a it's a really slow glass cannon okay uh it's it's got a little bit of tankiness on here and also on the relic for YSG uh the relic is very good you get 20 percent defense five percent skill damage really great stuff there definitely unlock that as soon as you can but uh it's a really slow march but it's so so good okay so the first route you could do is expertise in Zhuge Liang. Uh, the second route you could go is try to get a 5515 Zhuge Liang. Uh, I think that's probably better than 5551 in my opinion. Okay. And see what happens. If you can get that, that's great. Eventually you'll want to come back around and expertise him. But for your first entry into KVK3, if you could skip this third skill and use those sculptures on something else that might be that might come in clutch it might actually come in clutch it's not a bad skill you get 20 percent skill damage okay and there's also a 10 percent chance of 50 percent attack for three seconds so this is actually a really nice skill to have in the open field but even just having it at one you do get five percent skill damage and a 25 percent archer attack increase so you're just just by unlocking this you're getting half the value of the archer buff which is nice no points required the skill damage lacking is unfortunate uh, i do prefer it at 20 but when you think about how many sculptures it costs to get this skill to five if you are able to get this one to five uh it's like 310 sculptures to finish the last skill it's a kind of insane so if you want to try to save sculptures you could try to skip this get the fourth skill to five which gives you 10 percent bonus damage with the marquee effect and also when you consume the marquee effect then you're going to deal 1500 damage factor to three targets in a forward facing fan shaped area that's basically a second active skill it's actually insane so really powerful stuff here uh the expertise here does make you start the battle with the marquee effect which means your first skill cycle is going to be a double aoe which is why he's so powerful and also you're going to gain extra rage which is just amazing right so he's got a good expertise as well i think the expertise here is worth it but it's up to you if you want to go all in on expertise first and pair him with ysg or if you want to try the budget build uh you could save 310 sculptures and then go to Boudica. okay I think 5551 Boudica is all you need, especially if you're free to play. I think that is a good place to stop. Okay. This last skill doesn't really do that much in the open field, and the expertise is not nearly as good as it once was. Okay. In a world before Zhuge Liang was in the game, this was way more valuable because it was like the number one way to remove control effects but now you have it for free on the second skill yes it's going to occur less frequently at 50 percent compared to 80 percent but I mean you I guys th again 
this last skill is going to take 310 sculptures to max out in order to unlock this expertise i don't think it's worth it when you have it right here i mean it's perfectly fine the way it is okay so the first thing you want to invest in is Zhuge Liang. And again, this Richard is for PVE content. So he's going to go down here. You invest in Zhuge Liang either to five, five, one, five or expertise. You pair him with YSG. If you actually do the five, five, one, five Zhuge Liang, and you put the rest of your sculptures into Boudica to get her to five, 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 one, then you could do uh, this pair like that. Uh, and your YSG basically sits on the bench for your first KVK three. Okay. That's kind of how I'm looking at this from my mind. Uh, this just makes the most sense. You know, obviously you could swap out the Boudica and YSG here, like depending on the scenario, right? If you're just jumping out of your city and attacking players on defense, then maybe you want to, um, keep the Boudica in the city and just do the double or trip really it's triple AOE right uh because you have the double AOE on uh the first the primary skill and the fourth skill on Zhuge Liang and also the AOE on YSG so triple AOE here which is just insanity but again for like farther away fights uh the March speed on Boudica is going to be nice the debuff on Boudica is insane the enemy has a March speed debuff as well it's so so good this combination this is probably the best open field pairing in the game right now in my opinion Nevsky Joan comes close for sure but really really excellent stuff here if you do go the route of expertise in Jiggly Young, uh you still will then go for Boudica 5551 after it's just going to take a little bit longer so keep that in mind uh that is going to be your next investment now once you're at this stage okay really it would be something like this now you have to decide who do you want to pair your YSG with because he's already expertise you might as well bring him out on the battlefield my recommendation is probably going to be Henry I actually think Henry is a really good combination for uh YSG I think Henry is very very tanky if we take a look at his kit over here really powerful single target damage factor 30 percent less skill damage taken for five seconds really good stuff here we have 20 percent attack 20 percent defense and 20 percent march speed outside of alliance territory third skill you can absolutely skip if you're not going to expertise him fourth skill gives you 10 percent archer damage and a 10 percent chance to instant proc 800 damage to someone who's hitting you with a five second cooldown now here is my dilemma okay um i think a lot of the tankiness from henry comes from the support tree and also the expertise and that's really unfortunate okay because i mean it's just the reality it really is uh yeah there's some skill damage taken reduction on the active skill sure that's fine that's great but really the tankiness comes from the expertise uh and so it's kind of, it's really rough i hate telling free-to-play players to expertise a commander like henry because he's a conquering commander and you're never going to be rallying with him right but you know i'm gonna i'm gonna say if you go with henry here you probably want to expertise him for that tankiness okay you you probably do i don't think you're going to regret that i think the extra normal attack damage is great and the 20 percent less normal attack damage taken for a majority of your rage bar is amazing that's wonderful okay uh if you really hate the idea of expertising henry then you probably want to actually consider getting nebu instead skipping a nebu's expertise is something that i can get behind 100 because i've actually done it and before Boudica came into the game i was running nebu with ysg that was my tried and true combination for archers and it worked really really well we have a five target 1500 damage factor aoe it's a little bit lacking it's a little bit vanilla these days but it's still a really nice damage factor it also again gets 50 percent skill damage actually 55 percent skill damage bonus from ysg if he has the relic here we get 30 percent defense 15 percent march speed not conditional by the way you just get this march speed all the time no matter what skip the third skill and on the fourth skill you get 15 percent bonus damage and a 10 percent chance to reduce the target's rage by a hundred so really nice rage debuff here uh, again nebu is just a vanilla aoe stat stick and he has more defense than uh henry but he has less total stats okay obviously henry has 20 percent attack 20 percent defense nebu has 30 percent just defense flat right uh, he also has more march speed but it's conditional so it's really up to you guys kind of what you prefer if you can invest the sculptures i do think henry is probably slightly better than nebu these days if they're if you're talking about expertise if you're talking about 5515 i think you probably go with nebu still uh, i know that might be a little bit unpopular but the aoe is still really solid and he's quite tanky which is good especially because he's going with your ysg so that is going to be your second pair okay either the budget build with nebu or you go all in on henry and i think this is probably even more tanky than uh than this honestly i know that 
there's slightly more defense here but it the expertise on Henry is really great and the support tree obviously Henry's going to be primary here because you want to hide the YSG and most people don't really want to hit Henry typically he's not your first target there's no massive debuffs on him that are like insane right so he's not really a priority so you hide your YSG behind him and you get free AoE which is amazing now this is the part where you have to decide do you want to go all in on three Archer Marges before you do anything else or do you want to branch off okay because this is an Archer guide I'm going to assume that you're going to build three Archer Marches but keep in mind that you can really change these around depending on what you think is most valuable okay uh, for the third March you definitely want to do the 5515 Nebu if you haven't already okay uh that's going to be 100 your third March part of your third and then you're actually going to go with Art Amnesia now here's the thing with Art Amnesia first of all Art Amnesia is Bay. you know it I know it everyone knows it she is your psycho goth girlfriend that everybody dreams of okay let's just be honest with each other all right that's let's be real okay also she has a three target 1800 damage factor AoE which is really nice you're probably going to get her to 5511 or 5515 to be honest because the second skill 20 percent defense 20 percent health very tanky very very tanky very very good we love it third skill doesn't matter because it's garrison fourth skill you have a 50 percent chance of silencing yourself but increasing your damage by 50 percent for five seconds crazy good okay crazy good and even if you only unlock this it's 25 percent bonus damage so you could really save a lot of sculptures by just doing five five one one I mean that's probably the way to go to be honest with you in fact yes I'm gonna say do not do five five one five if you haven't already uh because there's a chance art amnesia gets power crept within the next year anyway like if you're playing the game one year from now there's a chance people aren't using artemisia at all anymore so if you're watching this now and you haven't invested in her at all five five one five probably just stop there okay and the thing about her is that the self silence is really uh not great except for the fact that you actually can pair her with your Boudica uh and do some serious work okay so if you're going to build three Archer Marches you're actually going to remove your Jugliong from your uh Artemisia and you're probably gonna do something like this uh this is probably the best three March lineup that I can think of um all of them have a little bit of March speed built in you have small amounts of March speed on Boudica a little bit of March speed on Henry a little bit of March speed on Nebu uh and then these three have none so you definitely want to probably split them up Artemisia basically has to go with uh Boudica because she removes Artemisia's self silence and lets you continue to get that bonus damage uh the Nebu YSG is really tried and true it's just a double vanilla AoE like it's really nice so might as well you get a bunch of defense on both of them tons of skill damage on both of them it's really good and then your Jugliong with your Henry is gonna just be really real I mean you get the massive kit on on Jugliong which is insane and then Henry is dealing massive single target damage plus he's quite tanky once you get him expertise uh I think this is like a really I mean if you go up against this March in the open field like it's gonna be pretty hard to take this thing down without at least taking quite the beating in return so really good stuff and also if you want to hide your Jugliong you can kind of put him behind your Henry and have the support tree here be a little bit more tanky as well you do sacrifice the skill tree though and the skill tree on Jugliong is where you get a lot of nice extra bonus skill damage especially for your secondary as well so I prefer the skill tree and also Jugliong's his animation like out in the world he does a, a circle of fire with his arrows like people are probably going to know that you have him anyway but you can mix these up depending on kind of what you're going for and if you want to try to hide him but this is like a really solid three March lineup like they're really good this is like a really good option it's actually insane archers haven't been this strong I don't think I can remember the last time we've seen archers this stacked with really good open field viable marches I think this is in a, they're in a great spot right now nothing here is like super hard countered by cavalry or anything like obviously cavalry counters them but there's nothing like about their kits that would it inherently uh actually counter anything you're really trying to do here so yeah archers in a great spot now once you've done this it's time to move on from archers okay uh and you want to go straight for the Nevsky Joan that's like a no-brainer that's one of the best pairings in the entire game right now it's exceptional and your cavalry have probably just been sitting around doing nothing or being rally fodder or garrison fodder right uh and this is the way this is the way to go okay you could do a 5551 Nevsky or an expertise Nevsky if you can and then Joan of Arc can be 5515 or 5115 if you can get her there uh and try and save 
save some sculptures because really obviously you're more so focused on archers than you are about your cavalry march so for a budget build 5115 for joan is insane right if you can get it um if not 5515 is probably really good you could stop there for sure definitely don't need to expertise joan at least not as a archer player or if you're a whale then yeah definitely expertise her i did i don't regret it i think she's great and then eventually you'll build uh an infantry march i know shocking right we're finally getting around to infantry now there's two marches that you could build i think most people say guan cpo is the way to go and i think if you have that that's fine like you're good you're 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 you've got double aoe you've got a silence you got a health debuff on cpo it's like this is a a perfect combo right but i think right now you could actually toy with not even investing in guan right because really you would want to expertise cpo and guan you would want five one five five but it's really hard to get five one five five like the skill distribution is really hard to achieve and if you want to just avoid that uh you could do a five 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 one sargon or a five 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 zero sargon and put them behind your cpo uh, i think what this does is obviously it removes some aoe and you remove that silence but you get a little bit more of a tanky march that has more of a single target punch and you can also spread the uh, odd debuff from sargon uh with your cpo's aoe right and basically this is sort of like an a, that would effectively make this an aoe to Myris, right that's pretty much what it is the reason that i would consider this over guan right because it, it feels like for the longest time we've been saying guan cpo like if you're building one infantry march it's always guan cpo right the reason that i think right now is the time where you may want to consider not doing that is just because it's going to be cheaper to build the sargon most likely unless you're super lucky with guan and also because we now have two two meta armies um, or two meta commanders that are willing to remove the debuff from Guan um, his silence has never felt weaker really uh, I mean it's it's countered by two different commanders very very powerfully right now which is crazy and also Zhuge Liang when he counters it he actually deals damage to the Guan right so it's not like he just shrugs off the silence he shrugs it off and deals 500 damage factor right so it's it's kind of unfortunate the situation Guan is in is he still good yes do I still use him in KVK yes I think he's he's fine right uh, but you could make the you could make the argument that a Sargon is easier to build um potentially cheaper because of it and also um Guan kind of has one foot out the door so I mean you could kind of just future proof your lineup and go for Sargon instead and just give up on the actual double AoE and that's pretty much it now the only other thing I'll say is that um if you don't want to go for your Nebu and you get mega lucky from gold keys you could maybe slap the relic on your Thutmose and have a super cheap third build here and saving the sculptures for uh, Nebu it's unlikely that this would happen and it's also kind of a target like a lot of times people see that Mose and they're like oh that's probably like a weak player if you did do that you could probably do something like this instead just kind of hide that that Mose, right uh and he, I mean he'll do great with Juga Leong regardless and then you get uh basically this this pairing back which we talked about earlier that's another thing you could do I think again you get a small AoE on him you get some March speed here you get some attack you get some bonus damage 15 percent outside of Alliance territory which is I think like it's kind of like a mini Nebu like the fourth skill on Nebu right similar stuff there you also get a little bit of defense and an instant proc 10 percent chance to increase the skill damage taken by the targets by 15 percent that's a pretty powerful debuff for an instant proc you also get 10 percent counterattack damage and a 10 percent chance for instant proc and you also deal more damage to infantry so basically everything on his kit is good in the open field and then you come over to his relic and you realize wait a minute hold up uh when you get a double relic here you're getting 45 percent of stats and 20 percent of it is health really kind of nasty to consider that many bonus stats on a Juga Leong I think you know especially because they both have AoE like yeah it's smaller on 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 the most for sure but I honestly think if you can get lucky with those gold keys you may be able to use him uh instead of a Nebu possibly it could just be copium though and I wouldn't bank on it so I would say stick to going for something like this and that's going to be good to go okay now we're going to go over equipment here and this is kind of like the starter build equipment that you want to go with unfortunately we do have the purple boots here uh that's going to be probably the hardest thing to get and honestly the reason for that is because the only other boots that you could really even consider are the sturdy boots right because the archer attack here is not great you could just literally go for gray sturdy boots until you get your flame treads that's pretty much all you could try for uh there's like nothing else sort of in between that you can get edged boots are not great so yeah you're kind of stuck with this as a beginner's build even though it is got one purple piece but you have a nice spread here of defense and health 
which is really nice moving forward you're going to replace these pieces with all purple okay the reason that archers are so great in the open field for free to play players is that well, one of the reasons is that they have what is a epic set here okay this is a set you get bonuses three percent attack three percent defense if you have at least four pieces so unfortunately you actually lose total health here but you gain a bunch more stats okay you have a ton of defense and a really nice chunk of attack as well this is a really really solid build and then finally um i would recommend probably replacing the chest and the gloves with the uh dragon's breath sets what this is going to do is actually give you even more health okay you'll see the health actually goes way up with this and that's because of the chest piece unfortunately replacing the gloves doesn't do much but it does give you the two set bonus so you want to replace the chest first then the gloves uh really at the same time if you can uh but you know afterwards for the gloves for sure then you also get to keep the set bonus here by keeping the helmet and the legs um from the revival set which gives you a little bit more attack as well and overall this is kind of like I mean once you get this you don't really need to change that much else this is kind of a really solid build honestly you might consider replacing the golden age after you've done the chest and the gloves because at least no matter which one you get it is definitely an improvement even if you don't get the special talent if you go to replace the flame treads with the dragon's breath boots you're trading off seven and a half percent of you know talented health or if you don't get a talent here it's just defense and that's not a great trade same thing with the legs you go from defense here to you know attack here which is like I don't think that's a great trade-off same thing with a helmet you go from defense to attack so um, it feels like a lateral move for most upgrades until you get the special talent uh whereas with the weapon you don't need the special talent it will be an upgrade regardless but it is just way more expensive because like the amount of materials needed for weapons is really really high so ultimately i think if you do go the full dragon's breath set i think that's probably fine especially because you'll be building most likely uh multiple sets of this before you do anything else right like we talked in this video about having three archer armies out in the open field you're probably gonna want to get three of this set before you start replacing the helmet the legs and all this other stuff for micro optimizations right that's just my two cents on that especially if you're gonna also build you know infantry and cavalry equipment this is like a really solid build I think it's I think it's fine I mean you're not gonna be leading a rally or a garrison or anything like that it's just open field fighting and that's pretty much it guys if you made it all the way to the end of this video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it don't forget to join the giveaway down below and while you're down there comment down below your thoughts on everything here do you agree do you disagree i would love to hear from you guys in the comment section and consider subscribing and clicking the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace